okay hello hello grade 12 in today's lesson we're gonna be looking at question 5 um, our reaction rate in paper 2 chemistry so it says the reaction of 15 gram of impure sample of calcium carbonate which is given in a chemical formula with excess hydrochloric acid hcl of concentration 1.0 mole per dm cube is used to investigate the rate of a reaction the balanced equation for the reaction is as given below here the volume of carbon dioxide produced is measured at regular intervals a sketch graph representing the total volume of carbon dioxide gas produced as a function of time is shown below so here we are given the volume of carbon dioxide um, which is produced to measure the rate of reaction as we can see our carbon dioxide here is on the product side and then you will always note that they will choose a gas here and uh, form our table from the gas right that is used to measure the reaction rate and then 5.1 it says define the term reaction rate let's run quickly to that we say reaction rate is defined as the change in concentration of products or reactants per unit time so when we say per unit time we, we mean it can be measured in minutes can be measured in seconds or it can be measured in hours whatever uh, time interval that they choose to use or unit of time then uh, 5.2 says give a reason why the gradient of the graph decreases between t2 and t3 from t2 and t3 we can see that the gradient here is becoming um less steep right so by decreasing we are saying that the, the curve here is becoming less steep remember the more when it becomes more steep it means the gradient is increasing when it is be it is becoming less steep meaning it is um bending like this or curving like that forming um some kind of a parabola function so it means that the, the the gradient is decreasing here so the reason for that we say it's because reactants are being used up remember as the reaction is progressing the reactants are being used up meaning the concentration of the reactant is decreasing and therefore the rea the reaction rate will also decrease so that's the reason we see a decrease there in a in the gradient of the graph so it means that our reaction rate is decreasing as a result of the reactants being used up and therefore the concentration of the reactants decreasing then so 5.3 says changes in the graph between t1 and t2 are due to temperature changes within the reaction mixture so we know that uh, temperature changes here refer to either an increase or a decrease in temperature now 5.3.1 is saying is the reaction exothermic or endothermic now looking at this graph we can see that we are presented with uh, the progression of the volume of co2 and then what we can observe between t1 and t2 is that uh, the volume of co2 rapidly increases as the the curve here is becoming more steeper right so we can see that between time t1 and t2 the volume of co2 uh, increases right and then remember this co2 is released in the form of energy or heat right so we can see what we can say what reaction is this one this is an exothermic reaction because we can see that uh, more of the co2 will be produced as a result of the temperature increase right so the temperature here is increasing indicated by this step graph we know that the only thing that can increase the reaction rate is an increase in temperature so we know that if we increase a, a we, we increase temperature we need uh, the this must be the the exothermic reaction because it will then release the energy right so we say this reaction is what exothermic and the reason 5.3.2 says explain the answer by referring to the graph so now referring to the graph will say the curve becomes steeper between t1 to t2 you can see that here the gradient is steep and then we say which indicates an increase in the reaction rate so we know a steeper graph indicates an increase in the reaction rate now we know an increase in reaction rate is as a result of an increase in temperature remember they said that uh, whatever that is happening between t1 and t2 
the, the, the changes there between T1 and T2 are due to a temperature change, right? So we know the, the only temperature change that can lead to an increase in temperature, that can lead to an increase in the reaction rate is when we increase the temperature, right? And then we say thus the reaction is what is exothermic. Why do we say the reaction is exothermic? Because now energy is being released. So energy is released, right? So we see that energy, that energy is being released uh, uh, as a result of the CO2 being produced, right? Then uh, 5.4 says, the percentage purity of the sample is 82.5 percent so percentage purity we know that percentage purity in grade 11 tells us of um the the amount of sample that will react so if we have an impure sample we first need to get its percentage purity to get a what amount of that sample will, will be able to react. Remember with an impure sample, as we are told here, the, the 15 gram here is an impure sample. The impure sample cannot uh, react. We, we cannot react all of the impure sample because remember we are looking for calcium carbonate. And if we say this is impure, that means the 15 gram does not only contain the calcium carbonate, it also uh, contain um, other, uh, other uh, elements so in order to to find the, the 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 calcium carbonate only we have to calculate its percentage purity and find a uh, how much of calcium carbonate can we get from this 15 gram so we are told that we can only get 82.5 percent um calcium carbonate out of this 15 gram so here to calculate the percentage purity we need to use this 80 82.5 percent and actually calculate the 82.5 percent of 15 gram so that we find the mass of the pure calcium carbonate so uh, then it says here calculate the value of x so x here is the volume of um the 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 the, the, the carbon dioxide so the maximum volume of the carbon dioxide that is to say the maximum carbon the, the the maximum volume of carbon dioxide that will be produced at the end of the reaction then it says calculate the value of x on the graph assuming that the gas is collected at 25 degrees celsius which is room temperature then take the vol the, the molar gas volume at 25 degrees celsius as 24 thousand centimeter cube now if they say take the molar gas volume we know that the molar gas volume as given in our in our data sheet is 22.4 dm cube but if the question comes and say take the molar gas volume at 25 degrees as this then it means you no longer use this one you use their molar gas volume so your new constant now will be 24,000 a centimeter cube which we know obviously we have to divide by a thousand so that we get our volume in dm cube so that will give us 24 dm cube so this is the volume that we are going to use for our molar gas volume and not the 22.4 remember this one is for stp right so you don't use this constant you use the one that they give you right um so let's start we have uh so first thing that we want to do is to calculate the mass of the pure calcium carbonate and then we'll do that by saying 82.5 percent which is 82 over 100 multiplied by 15 and then that will give us 12.375 grams right so remember our mass in chemistry is given in grams it's unlike physics in physics we are given in cages so always note that now that we have um the the mass we want to calculate the number of moles of the pure calcium uh, calcium carbonate and then we will have obviously our m over big m and then the mass is 
12.375 and then the molar mass uh, from our periodic table this is gonna give us 100 so calcium remember is 40 and then plus 12 plus 3 times 16 the, that will give us 100 and then punching that in your calculator you have 0 0.124 mole right so this is the number of moles of the pure calcium carbonate and then remember we are looking for the volume right so we have um we can calculate so since now we have the number of moles of this we can now use the ratios because remember we are not looking for the volume of the calcium carbonate but instead we are looking for the volume of the carbon dioxide so now we can compare the ratios and then looking at our balanced equation we can see that the ratio of calcium carbonate to uh, carbon dioxide is just one is to one so that means the number of moles the number of moles of calcium carbonate will be exactly the number of moles of the carbon dioxide so if we have 0 0.124 moles here that means we also have 0 0.124 mole as a result of them having the same coefficient so the ratios are equal now that we have um the the number of moles of carbon dioxide using our ratios we can now calculate the volume but then using this formula n is equals to v over vm so now we'll say to uh, so calculate the volume of co2 we'll have the number of moles multiplied by the molar gas volume and then there is 0 0.124 multiply by again remember it's 24 and not the 22.4 so when you multiply this this will give you 2.98 dm cube so this is the value that is supposed to be at x so 2.94 dm cube so therefore x is equals to 2.94 dm cube that's how you have it okay so okay so 5.5 says how will the reaction rate change if 15 gram of pure sample of calcium carbonate reacts with the same hydrochloric solu solution now okay we can understand now that the 15 gram here is pure so that means 100 percent of this will have to react because here there are no impurities right so if now 15 gram of this has reacted remember from the previous question because the 15 gram was impure we found that only 12.375 gram is actually calcium carbonate so from 12.375 gram to 15 gram we can see that um the the, the concentration of the calcium carbonate has been increased right so remember now the 15 gram will react because this is pure no impurities now it says choose from increase decrease or remain the same remember we are talking about the reaction rate how the reaction rate will be affected will the reaction rate increase decrease or remain the same now we do understand that if we increase the concentration of the calcium carbonate we obviously have to uh, have an increase in the reaction rate since more particles will now be involved in the reaction so it's increase now 5.6 says use the collusion theory to explain the answer to question 5.5 now we'll say more calcium carbonate particles will react with correct orientation so when we have more calcium carbonate particles being involved in the reaction it increases the chances of the particles uh, reacting with correct orientation and then since we we will have more particles reacting with correct orientation this will uh, this will increase uh, the number of effective collisions per unit time if the number of effective collisions increase per unit time then it means the reaction rate will also increase so yeah.